Hello everyone. Welcome to this new video. So in the previous video, we had started with module two of the subject VLSI design and testing. And we have discussed with some of the introduction part of the MOS transistor theory. And we have discussed with one type of transistor that is NMOS enhancement transistor. Okay. So in table in type of that we have discussed in uh, the enhancement mode how the NMOS transistor would be working and how the the three regions are formed that is linear uh, saturation and cutoff region and we have seen some of the conditions of the IDS and with respect to VDS and VGS and the threshold voltage VT. Okay. So these things already we have discussed in the first video. So those who have not watched it, please go and watch it. It is available in the chat. Okay. So this is the second video. Where we are going to discuss with the PMOS transistor. Okay. Let us start now. A PMOS that is P channel MOSFET, the MOS, you know that it stands for metal oxide semiconductor. So PMOS transistor is similar to that of the NMOS transistor, but with opposite to doping. Okay. I have already told you many times that the PMOS and NMOS uh, transistors are inversely proportional to each other. Whatever the working of the uh, NMOS, its opposite, the working would be of PMOS transistor. Okay. Uh, in the NMOS, we had P-type substrate. In case of PMOS, we are using N-type substrate. Source and drain are of P-type. Okay. The operation, apply a negative gate voltage with respect to the source. Next, this draws the holes as the charge carriers, which are the positive charge carriers. In, case, in, this, in this case, it is poles. Below the gate, inverting the region from N-type to P-type and creating a conductive feature. A negative drain voltage causes holes to flow from source to drain through this channel. Okay. So this is some of the introduction part of PMOS transistor. You could see the circuit here, how this would be looking like. This is again symmetric to each other, source and drain terminals. So this is the uh, silicon dioxide layer. Okay. As you have seen in NMOS, this is the silicon dioxide layer here. Okay. And this is the polysilicon layer with the uh, number of uh, maximum number of crystals. So in this case, holes are entering and electrons are leaving with respect to the electric field. Two P-type regions, okay, and N-type substrate and uh, substrate potential which is usually uh, equal to VDD in this case. In case of NMOS, it was equal to ground or VSS, okay. So this is the circuit here, note it out. Next, let us see about the threshold voltage adjustment in case of this PMOS transistor. Sometimes it is necessary to adjust the native VT of a MOSFET. Some of the two common methods are in used here are ion implantation, first one, adjusting doping concentration nearer to the uh, silicon silicon dioxide interface. Next is dual layer insulator, combine SI3N4, the, uh, that is where epsilon R, that is relative perm permittivity, is nearly equal to 7.5, and SiO2, that is relative permittivity, is uh, uh, nearly equal to 3.9. The effective epsilon R increases around 6, making the gate electrically more effective. Okay. Equivalent had to having thinner SiO2 layer when the uh, effective or epsilon uh, permit, uh, permittivity, relative permittivity increases, the, uh, the, the silicon dioxide layer would be getting thinner. Okay. Increasing the gate capacitance. Okay. Next is field threshold adjustment. To prevent unwanted inversion between the transistors, you should be using one is thick oxide and heavy doping or implant. This ensures that only the area under the gate would be getting inverted. Okay. Next, uh, P-type tra transistor is over. Okay. Next is body effect. Okay. Or substrate bias effect. Okay. So this is there in the syllabus and which is very, very important here. Okay. Let us see that now. Body effect. In most of the CMOS circuits, all MOSFETs share a common uh, substrate usually connected to ground. Okay. So, substrate voltage is normally the same for all the devices in case of body effect. But in some cases, for example, NAND gate, if you consider the example of a NAND gate, MOSFETs are connected in series. Okay. This causes the source voltage of upper transistor to rise, resulting in the source to substrate voltage that is VSC, VSB becomes non-zero. It won't be equal to zero. Okay. For example, if you take the bottom transistor VSP1 that is equal to zero volt, but the upper transistor won't be equal to zero volt. Okay. In case of this body effect. Okay. So this is the simple circuit diagram of, to represent the body effect where we have used uh, two transistors here. If you observe very carefully, these two are the 
team of transistors here okay where we have two gate terminals which are surrounded with the two of the threshold voltages one which is represented as vt1 and vt2 with the condition given that vt2 is greater than vt1 uh, as you observe in the diagram you could observe that the from the first gate voltage to ground the vt2 voltage is greater than that of vt1 from the diagram only it is uh, uh, visible okay with the uh, body terminal which is interconnected to each other okay so this is the basic body effect next in this body effect what happens when vsb that is source to substrate voltage increases okay what would be the changes appearing with respect to the body term under normal conditions that is when vgs is greater than vt the depletion layer with the remains constant and charge carriers are pulled into the channel from the source okay depletion layer widens between the channel and the substrate more charge is trapped in the depletion region to maintain charge neutrality the char channel charge decreases this causes an increase in the threshold voltage that is we could be concluding by saying that the threshold voltage would be basically varying that it would have be increasing that is the first threshold voltage with respect to the first uh, uh, vt1 in this case uh, vt1 and vt2 it would be getting changed with respect to the transistor positioning in series okay for example we have taken in the nand gate only okay yeah so with that with those cases the threshold voltage would be getting vary one important point to be noted the substrate voltage effectively adds to the channel potential making it harder to form the channel okay so this is basically what uh, these are the things which happens when the vsv that is source to substrate voltage would be getting increased uh, one main character uh, uh, factor we could be remembering is the transistor positioning would be uh, varying and the voltage that is threshold voltage would be uh, would be increasing or decreasing with respect to the change in the vsv okay next let us see the effect in threshold voltage the new effective threshold voltage considering the body effect is given by vt equal to vt0 plus or minus gamma of square root of source to substrate voltage vsp okay here vt is the effective threshold voltage vt of 0 is the threshold voltage when the source to substrate voltage is equal to 0 this gamma is called as the body effect coefficient which depends on the substrate sloping level typically the value of gamma uh, varies from in the range of 0 0.4 to 1.2 next is vsb that is source to substrate voltage the plus or minus sign uh, plus is used for nmos and minus is used for pmos okay this plus or minus sign represents that okay because we are using uh, if we use uh, nmos or pmos transistor the sign would be either plus or minus okay next higher the vt lower the current and slower the switching okay this is one condition which you need to be knowing body effect leads to performance degradation degradation means the performance would be getting varied when uh, body effect is applied body effect mainly the performance is uh, slightly decreased okay if we, the body effect happens especially in series connected logic circuits uh, for example you have seen just now right the two transistors when they are connected in series the body effect comes to the picture and this performance would be getting degraded in this case which you have just discussed right okay now the summary of this body effect expression what and all are the key points which you need to be taking away first is when vsp increases vt also increases for nmos this means the gate needs to be at the higher voltage to turn the transistor on next is for pmos the threshold voltage becomes more negative as vsp increases Okay, so these three are the simple takeaways or the summary of this body effect okay so this was about complete body effect with the circuits and uh, explanation could be uh, pausing the video and uh, could be taking down this explanation if you want okay next is as stated previously the mos transistors have three regions of operation okay which i have already discussed in the previous video also three regions of operations we have in this mos transistor that is one is cutoff region another one is linear region and uh, the third one is saturation region the ideal first order equations which describes the behavior of an nmos device in three regions are given below okay these are the three equations for ids okay for th three uh, regions one is for cutoff 
one is for linear and one is for saturation which is given here in case of cutoff region the condition is vgs minus vt is less than or equal to zero and the value of ids is equal to zero okay in case of linear region the condition is vds is less than vgs minus vt okay and the given equation is beta into vgs minus vt into vds minus vds square divided by 2 okay so this is the equation in linear region also in case of saturation region the equation is given by beta by 2 into vgs minus vt the whole square and the condition is vgs uh, vds is less than vds is greater than vgs minus vt okay in case of saturation region so what is this beta here uh, this beta here let us see here ids is the drain to source current VGS is the gate to source voltage, VT is the device threshold and beta is the MOS transistor gain factor. Okay, this is basically the gain factor in these equations. Okay, it has the separate formula here. Uh, beta is given by mu into epsilon divided by TOX into W by L where W is the width of the transistor and L is the length of the transistor. Okay, uh, this the actual equation is beta is equal to mu cox into w by l okay where the cox is there right that cox is equal to epsilon ox divided by tox okay so see here uh, epsilon divided by tox that is equal to the oxide capacitance here so that uh, uh, that is basically you could be saying that as the gate capacitance in case of this gain factor okay so this is the MOSFET gain factor, which tells us how effectively a MOSFET can conduct. Okay, the conduction of the MOSFET would be basically dependent on this gain, gain factor. It is crucial in defining the drain current IDS. Okay, components. One is mu. Okay, mu. Uh, I've already wrote, written this mu here. So this mu is basically the mobility of charge carriers. Okay, mobility of charge carriers. That is, uh, it checks how fast electrons move in the channel when electric field is applied. Next is epsilon, that is permittivity of gate oxide, okay, how well it can store in the electric field. Next is TOX, TOX is the gate oxide thickness, okay, thinner, uh, the thinner the gate oxide, the better the control of the gate terminal and WL is, as I have already told you, it is the width and length of the channel, okay. The intuition or we could be saying one thing as uh, the, could be uh, assuming one thing for uh, this uh, body effect that is, Higher the mobility, faster are the carriers and uh, the current would the current would be in the higher amount. Okay, larger the value of W by L, the wider is the channel. Okay, uh, wider channel means the width would be definitely more. So that's why the larger value of W by L and more room for carriers. Okay, so if the width and length value is large, the area would be sufficiently very large in size. So which would be leading to the area would be in large in size which would be leading to the more room for the uh, carriers to enter okay smaller the value of tox stronger the gate control over the channel okay so this is the these are some of the takeaways or the intuitions which you need to be taking in the uh, consideration okay so now with respect to the formulas which i have discussed right now let us see one simple numerical example okay uh, as vds increases ids also increases slightly Okay, that one thing which I have seen here. Okay. Example calculation here. So, see here, these are some of the typical values for NMOS device which is mentioned here. The value of mu n is uh, 500 centimeters square per V. Epsilon is 4 into 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 14 farad per centimeter. The oxide uh, thickness is 500 angstrom. Okay. And so by substituting the value in the equation that is uh, beta, here they have asked us to find the value of beta here. Okay, so if you substitute the values and if you find the value of beta, we would be getting around 35 into W by N micro ampere per voltage square with respect to the value, whatever value you give to the width and length, the answer we would be getting for beta. Okay, yeah, so this was completely about body effect. If there are some more theory part uh, in brief, in the, which is mentioned in the notes, which I have not explained, okay. So this uh, notes I'm, I would be giving you in the description. So you could be accessing that and you could be referring our notes as well.
okay so that's all for this video guys in this video we have discussed one is pmos type transistor and the brief explanation on body effect okay so please uh, if you had watched this video till the end it would be very beneficial for you guys during the exam point of view so that's all guys please like share subscribe to our channel keep supporting us thank you for watching we'll see you in the next video thank you